Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about structure padding and packing. So this is also a very commonly asked interview questions in HFT interviews, and it is not actually totally related to C or C++, but it is more of a computer architecture question as well, because uh, a lot of computer architecture concepts are involved here, like how memory is aligned, how memory is accessed, and how modern processors do memory accesses. So all those things, uh, this concept is basically related to all those things, basically how compiler also lays down the memory. And during my time, like I have taken interviews of a lot of candidates and I have actually also rejected some of the candidates based on this question. I mean, I'm pretty, sometimes I'm pretty amazed as well that this concept is not that widely known. So I have finally decided to create a video on this. So let's see what the question is. And based on, with the help of that question, I'll try to explain what basically structure padding means and what stru structure pa packing is. So the question is very simple. You have this C++ struct named employee it only has two members one is of care type and another is of int type index so let's say when i do when i find the size of this employee structure emp structure so what should be the size be okay and on the computer on which i am running so you can see that i have printed the size of int and care and the size of int is four and size of care is one so what should be the size of this emp struct so most people answer that okay care is one byte and int is four bytes, so four plus one, five. So size of amp should be five, which is actually wrong. And I will explain you why this is wrong, but let me first show you what the size of amp comes out to be. So the size of amp comes out to be eight. Okay, so instead of five, it comes out to be eight. So why this is eight? So the answer is how compiler lays down the memory. Okay, so let's jump into it. So on modern processors, the, com the way compiler lays out memory is actually constrained in order to make memory accesses faster. Okay, and each type except care has an alignment requirement. So like each type has an alignment requirement, you basically compiler cannot store any type at anywhere in memory location, it has some requirement, like there are some constraints, basically from which memory location that particular data type should be stored. Okay, so the alignment rules are something like this that <laughs> Cares can start on any byte address, but data types which have size two byte, okay, like shorts, they must start on an even address in the memory location. Data types which have size four byte, like ints or maybe floats on some architecture, must start on an address divisible by four. Similarly, data types whose size is eight byte, like longs and double, they must start on an address divisible by eight. And it does not make any difference whether the data type is signed or unsigned. Okay, so what basically this means for our problem is that this care c can actually be stored at anywhere in the memory but x which is an of which is of type integer and has size 4 it must be stored on only at that particular memory location whose memory address is basically divisible by 4 i mean its storage should start from that place so to make you know to satisfy that requirement what compiler does under the hood is this that it would actually insert it will insert some padding here okay so that's why it is called structure padding so it will insert padding of three bytes here okay why this is three byte as i said like this memory address should start at a location which is divisible by four okay so if care starts at any location so uh, to make sure that int x is starting at a location which is divisible by four we need to have like three byte padding okay like one thing you might think is that this padding can actually be three as well two as well one as well or zero as well okay but uh, like compiler has some constraints like it is it tries to make sure that the alignment is according to the widest type in the structure so by widest type i mean the type which has the largest size okay so every mem member in this particular struct will be stored at a memory location which is according to the widest data type. So like widest data type in this structure is int is x whose size is four. It should be stored at a memory location which is divisible by four. So every member in this struct will be stored at a memory location which is divisible by four. I mean, its storage will start there. So that's why this care will start at a location which is divisible by four to make sure that x comes at, x is also stored at a location which is divisible by four. Compiler has to forcefully add this three byte padding. And that's why the size comes out to be eight. Like this is one, this is three, and then this is four. Okay, like to show you in the, like how it is internally organized in memory. So this is how computer memory looks like. Like this is actually a uh, computer memory. Basically it com consists of some words. Okay, so let's say C was stored here. Okay, 
now this what will happen is something like this like x cannot be stored at just after c okay it cannot be stored just after c it needs to start at a memory location which is divisible by 4 okay let's say c was at this stored at this 100 location which is divisible by 4 now x needs to start at a memory next memory location which is divisible by 4 and that memory location is actually this 104 okay so x will be stored in this memory location its storage will start from this particular memory location because and this three bytes will be actually occupied by the padding which is inserted by the compiler so this is how you know variables are laid out in memory by the compiler so that's why that size of struct eventually came out to be this hole which is 8 now i mean the rules are very simple as i told you that uh, whatever is the size of the data type the its storage must start from that particular address which is divisible by that size okay and the technical term or the jargon for this is that c basic c types are self aligned and why they need to be self aligned i mean why alignment is so important so self alignment actually makes memory access faster for the processor because it facilitates generating single instruction fetches so as you all know like it doesn't matter in which programming language you write the code whether it is c plus plus java go rust python it doesn't matter eventually everything is con converted into instructions like machine instructions which are executed on the cpu now depending on the way those machine instructions are generated and how fast those instructions are is what eventually decides the performance of your program okay so if something can happen in only one cpu cycle or only in one single instruction so that is definitely going to be faster rather than you know having a scenario where the same thing takes two or more instructions so if the memory is self aligned the access is only single instruction if it is not aligned the access is actually needs to be like can be more than one instruction because you know there are two or more accesses which span the machine word boundaries and as I, as I told you that memory is actually laid out in words and like that is why self alignment is so important to make memory accesses faster and c++ compiler makes sure of that <laughs> now in general a struct instance will as i told you like in general a struct instance is going to have the alignment of its widest scalar member so by widest i mean that the whatever type whose size is the biggest in the struct and compilers do this as the easiest way to ensure that all members are self-aligned for fast access like if you know it is pretty uh, it is like simple math like if why does data type has size 8 byte so if all the you know variables are stored at a memory location starting from a memory location which is divisible by 8 so it will make sure of these require uh, basically of these constraints as well because anything which is divisible by 8 is also divisible by 4 is also divisible by 2 and is also divisible by 1 so that's why this rule is there that alignment should be of the widest scalar member and and this is actually going to make sure that all the members are self aligned okay so let's jump into it so let's basically see a couple of code examples so now there are a few things which we can do like there are a few th tricks which can happen so let me show you another example like this is our struct foo okay and this has a care member then it has an integer member and then it has another care member so like why does data type here is int which is 4 so all of these three data types will be aligned by this 4 so the size of this struct should come out to be 12 because this is going to be 4 this is going to be 4 this is going to be 4 i mean the way this is going to be 4 is because compiler will add some padding here like padding of 3 size here and then compiler will also add padding of 3 size here as well okay it would be something like this so anyways let's see what the size for this particular struct comes out to be and let's actually comment out this foo and see and the size comes out to be 12 as i told you okay now like there are some scenarios you know where you are writing code for memory constrained environments i mean where memory consumption is very important like how much memory you are consuming you want to optimize as much memory as possible so what you can do in some in these scenarios like one way to you know decrease the size of this struct due to this padding and alignment is that you can reorder the members you can reorder the members like this like you store the widest data type first which is int then you store these two cares now like you can see there is no difference between this foo and foo reordered like only the difference is that the we have the ordering of the members in which they are declared in this particular struct but the numbers are same I and mean, it also has two cares it also has two cares and it has one int and it also has one int 
so i mean size should come out to be same this should be 12 this should be 12 but it is not going to be why it is not going to be because let's see the widest data type is index alignment is going to be 4 so this is going to be stored at a memory location which is which will be divisible by 4 now this will now this cats uh, basically storage will start at a memory location which is again divisible by 4 okay because if this started at memory location if a, x was stored at let's say memory location capital x so or let's say memory location m which is divisible by 4 so this c will be stored at a memory location m plus 4 okay because from m to m plus 3 like x will be occupying the memory now this will take only one byte so this particular char can be stored at the next particular byte only at m plus 5 in the memory because as i said like char is only one byte it can it can be stored anywhere now the compiler will only have to add padding of two size because eventually the whole struct should be self-aligned so only padding of two size will be added okay so that uh, like basically the alignment is according to the widest data type so this means that the size of this struct comes out to be what eight because this is four this is two and more two byte padding will be added and if i run this program and see the size of the foo reordered let's see what it comes out to be i mean it is going to be eight only so yeah as i said like foo is 12 and foo reordered is eight so if you just reorder the members in your struct you could get some uh, basically you can optimize some memory okay uh, your memory consumption can be reduced so this is one of the like this is one way which a lot of programmers use in embedded systems to you know decrease their memory consumptions but this is sometimes not enough and like c++ actually introduced some attributes or some pragma declarations which can actually help you to you know constrain the memory totally like this foo it has only like this particular foo if you take it only has two cares and one int so int is four byte and care are one byte so ideally the size should only be six byte so to make this size only six byte what you can do is that you can actually declare this struct like this let's take this example so there is one pragma which can be defined let me show you this and let's say this is our foo packed okay and we have we have this char c which we had there we have this index and we have this char d okay to make to make sure that compiler adds no padding because we can see that why these sizes increase because compiler internally adds some padding to make sure that the memory is aligned so you can actually inhibit compiler from adding this padding you can and the way to do is that you can actually use this you can declare this struct as pragma pack one okay so if you do this you can read about this on cpp reference what this particular pragma is but if you do this what it would do is that the compiler will not do any padding i mean this is this pack means that you are actually telling compiler to pack the structure to actually do packing so let's see what the size of this particular struct comes out to be and it would be six only because now we have packed the structure so you can see that foo was 12 foo reordered is 8 and foo packed is 6 there is another way uh, using which you can do this basically you can pack the structure you can make sure you can inhibit the packing and that is using this there is another attribute uh, which a lot of hft companies use and this is this uh, so we have the same struct what i can do is i can tell this i can have this declaration underscore underscore attribute underscore underscore and then you can make this packed so if i do this the size will again come out to be six only because i have told compiler to inhibit the padding i have actually packed the structure and again you can see that foo pragma packed is also six foo packed was also six okay so why this packing is important so this actually becomes very important uh, like there are a lot of use cases where it is important but one use case related to hfts or trading industries is this that what happens that actually you have a trade server and you have you are you have you are connected to the exchange server okay and connection is usually via tcp only tcp connection is there it is not like you are calling some rest apis or something to send orders it is tcp connection i mean 
most of the exchanges on which i worked and i have worked on a lot of exchanges i mean in nasdaq Nas, uh, sorry nasdaq nice and a lot of exchanges in europe as well like euronext eurex vienna and in india as well nsc mcx and a lot of asian exchanges like in hong kong hkex and korean exchanges like krx so what happens is that i mean in all of those exchanges like the spec mandates you have tcp connection because uh, there are a lot of advantages which with which you get with those tcp connections rather than using rest apis so when you have a tcp connection what the way you place orders like the way you send data to exchanges you are basically sending some bytes to the exchange on the wire okay so those bytes are your orders so internally what you can have in code is something like this like you have a order struct okay and in order struct you have this quantity you have the price you have the side side basically means whether this is a buy order or a sell order and you have the symbol symbol is basically the ticker symbol name that uh, symbol name might contain that you are your basic this order is basically for google stock or apple stock so all the stocks are on the stock market are basically classified by a ticker symbol name like google symbol is gogl so this tells that for this particular symbol you are buying or selling this order and the quantity is this and the price is this so this is a struct which you will be having in your code okay so i created a order and the order is something like this the quantity is 12 the price is 100 i'm buying i'm buying 100 shares of google this symbol name is google i'm buying 100 shares of google for where the uh, for price 12 i mean the price of each share is 12 okay so this is i the order which i am quoting now i need to send this order on the wire like to the exchange usually my trade server is connected to the exchange's trade server via wire and and we have a tcp connection and i need to send this order packet so on the wire like what happens the data is going in the form of bytes i mean physically it's going in the form of currents or waves but yeah basically what how the packets the ethernet frames the way they are going are bytes only okay so i cannot directly send this order i need to convert this into byte so what i do is that i reinterpret cast it into a char star my order has been reinterpret cast to this char star and i get this order string this is basically nothing but a, an array of bytes and i can just send this order on the wire now on the other side what would be happening is that exchange will get these bytes so they have received my order string and they will reinterpret cast these bytes to their order and they will also have the same order structure okay because these order structure are provided by exchanges only in their specific order entry specifications and like every company follows this procedure only it doesn't matter i mean even optiver will be following this procedure hrt will be following this procedure citadel citadel jane street everyone follows this procedure okay jane street i mean they use a different programming language but you get my point so when they are receiving this bytes they are going to reinterpret cast these bytes into this order structure okay now you can see that uh basically the it depends like the bytes which i have sent on the wire what are what is the size of that byte okay so i have only sent 15 bytes so to make sure that reinterpret cast works correctly and you get the data back what the sender had sent exactly so whatever i sent in the quantity and price fields and in the size and symbol field the exchange should make sure that they get the same data you know they read it in a way that uh, whatever data i had sent was is intact so if they need to pack this order structure because if they do not do this packing i mean the size of the structure will not be 15 okay and if the size of this order struct won't be 15 like it is 15 because there are two ints so this is 8 byte this one byte for side that is 9 and this 6 so 9 plus 6 is 15 so they should only read exactly read 15 bytes and you know cast those 15 bytes to this order structure if let's say this packing wasn't there so compiler will be doing some padding and the size of this order struct won't be 15 okay and since it won't be 15 so exchange might you know this the way they would be doing reinterpret cast this won't work correctly because they might read some random data as well i sent only 15 bytes but they will be reading more than 15 bytes i do not know what is there in the you know what did they receive after 15 bytes it can be some random data and based on this this order will get randomized i mean the data which i have sent is will not be in in correct form so that's why it is important that both the exchange i and and i as well like the sender as well uses this packing i mean they make sure that their structure is packed there is no uh 
padding added by compiler they need to make sure at compile time that what is the size of this particular order okay so when i run this program you can see that i'm i've reinterpreted cast reinterpret cast this order bytes into this order new order struct and i'm printing the quantity price side and symbol and you can see that i get the exact data back quantity 12 price 100 side b and symbol is google if i do not if i let's say remove this let's see what happens if i run this now so this static is at failed i mean this uh you know order size of order is not 15 so that's why i put this static is i mean most in you will find this static results in production code as well this is to you know save yourself save your applications from forgetting to pack the structure okay so let's actually uh, remove this basically comment out this static result and let's try to run and see if the data is intact or we get some random data so in this case the data was indeed intact but let's actually do something else like i so yeah there's a compiler anyways the thing is that we need to make sure i mean the size of the order struct and we need to make sure like the bytes which are being sent on the wire is actually the bytes which are being read and to make sure to, to basically take care of that we need to make sure that we are compiler is not doing any kind of padding so there is this one document on internet which is named as the lost art of structure the lost art of structure packing and you can actually read about this this is a very great document it explains these things in detail and these again are very important from the hft interview perspective so anyways i hope you guys like this video please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time